Hey everybody on YouTube. Today I thought I'd do another video. It's uh, actually a part two to a customer job I just got done working on. Uh, this is a Sony VO9600 3 quarter pneumatic SP video machine. Um, I got this from a customer and I've been servicing it these past few days and I just thought I'd walk through some of the pros and cons of this deck and problems you will experience and how to do certain things and that type of stuff. So let's get into this real quick. First of all, you will notice, this thing comes on a door, okay? If you notice, you're going to see these little white tabs that you're right there in front. You have to turn these tabs, and then you can lift this whole center board. It's on a door. See how you lift it up? And then once you lift it up, it exposes your three-quarter pneumatic scanner and uh, your loading carriage and all the other kind of stuff. Okay, first of all, let me walk you through this part of it. Uh, this particular deck had a uh, some bad capacitors which are located behind this panel, which I had to actually change out. That controls your, your light. Sometimes you'll notice your lights for your numbers will be dim or just uh, completely not working. A lot of times, ten, nine, ten, nine times out of ten times, there's two capacitors behind there that are completely leaky. And if you change those out, that'll come right back up. Okay, as you can see, the, uh, te the, the lighting uh, counter has came back up. And then you got your uh, other things you clean back there. Um, you install the, the, the circuit board better, and you put your plastic uh, panel right back on, which I did. But as you can see, you can now get your numbers coming up, meaning it's working properly. Okay, that's a big problem for this machine. Second of all, you're going to notice um, inside here you got a loading motor where my finger is. Nine times out of ten... Either the motors are stuck, bearings are stuck and need to be replaced, and the gears and everything have to be stripped down with all the gooky grease and everything that's on those things. But you do need to rebuild, rebuild the loading uh, motor, and there's an actual belt that installs on those. You need to change the belt out. And then you got to put this in just right so you don't jam this thing where it will spin the gear loading ring properly without getting stuck, which is a little bit of a finesse because that's it's trial and error because... If you put that in wrong, it's, it's still not going to spin. So you got to do that properly. That takes a little bit of work. But getting it out and changing all that, that's, even, that's a whole other story. But, yeah, you have to change the loading motor, belt, do the alignment, get it with the alignment of the loading ring, and it's a bunch of little things you need to do on that part of it. Okay? Second of all, you're going to notice you got on the side, you got what's called, this is your, this is your uh, capstan lock pressure guide. When your capstan comes all the way around, here's your here's your uh, here's your uh, capstan motor right here, and when it gets to that point, this pushes the capstan right against the the roller right against the uh, the motor, and then the tape starts dragging from that point. Okay. Now the thing about this is is these get all stuck and they have to be redone. Sometimes you can't they don't move real well and you got to take it completely apart, regrease it, do the alignment on it, put it back in. So this is another point. You got point one, then you got point two all right then it comes down to the loading carriage which i spoke in my previous video this thing was a complete disaster i had to completely rebuild it which was a real pain in the ass and then after you do that there's a belt on the side of that and we place the belt out of it and then you got your uh rubber tires and your spindles back in there they have to be regreased new rubber tires have to be replaced and sometimes you'll notice that even these they don't spin if these don't spin real good you have to take these apart and Regrease them or change the bearings out depending on what's wrong with them and then sometimes you have to change the uh, capstan roller But there's a lot of points on these machines that you have to fix change or replace. I mean, this is just a few of them. And Then of course underneath there's a belt that you have to change out uh, That's another belt you need to change as well, but nine times out of ten you're gonna have this your loading carriage, they get damaged you got people in the machine rooms who beat the crap out of these trying to load tapes and They'll get to the point where they don't take tapes or the tapes will stay, stay jammed in the machine and all that kind of stuff. And then the main thing you need to know is you need to learn how to bake tapes. If you don't bake these sticky tapes, you, it's going to defeat the purpose and you're still going to jam tapes in the machine. You need to bake your tapes um, before you do any transfers because these tapes now are very, very sticky. As you can say, three-quarter pneumatic tapes are real sticky if you don't bake them. You know, they have edge problems. You're going to have a problem running these in the machine. <clears throat> but anyways, <clears throat> now that I got the thing working, I wanted to show you people. This I just got done servicing this whole deck. And as you can see, pop the tape in. 
Goes in real good. And if you notice there, drags the tip around the machine. And there you go. Now when you go back, you hit stop. Pop it out. Yeah, it should come right out with no problem. And there you go. Take it out. There you go. Pop it back in. Hit play. And it engages. And then you go back. You hit eject. Most people have most people who have these decks, the loading issues are always the biggest problem. But I, I get them back to the way they were factory when, when I work on them. That's what I do. So if you guys need these machines serviced, you need to send them to me. You know, as you can see, this is not a problem for me. I do this all the time. This is what I do all the time, service these decks. I know the three-quarter machines uh, very, very well. I know every model there is. I've worked on every model, so I know how to get these things up and running. And uh, like I said, three-quarter pneumatic machines. This is a VO9600, very, very good machine, but... Like I said, if you guys have any questions, um, you can always drop me an email or a message, let me know. But if you have three-quarter pneumatic machines like this, this is the 9600 or the 7600 or any type, uh, I'd be more glad to work on it right now. I could use the work. I'm, my, this is my downtime. I'm very, very slow. I could sure use some work right now. So contact me if you have one of these and you're interested in getting it fixed. Uh, I'd be glad to work on it. And again, guys... Takes a little bit, few days, but after it's a complete teardown and I go through all the trials and errors of the problems, you can get the machine back in and working again. And the worst thing in the world, people, is these machines, after they sit for 20 years, they're going to have issues. You buy them off eBay or anything like that, guarantee you're going to have a machine that's not going to function properly. I guarantee it. But after I get done working on it and going through it, I get it free-flowing again, and this is the end result. So if you have any questions about these machines, let me know, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.